Welcome back. This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. So, let's continue our our discussion about the um, uh, about the, the reproduction in sexual uh, sexual reproduction in plants. And uh, in this uh, in this uh, series of lectures, what we were dis what we have discussed so far is we have discussed about the uh, flowers. We have discussed about the different parts of the flower, and then we were we have discussed about the male sex organs and how the pollen grains are being formed within the anther. And we have also discussed how the anther uh, how the uh, anther is dispersing the uh, uh, the pollen grains. And in this uh, discussion, we were discussing about the cell pollinations, and we have also discussed about how the what are the advantages and disadvantages of cell pollinations and in that context only we were also discussing about why the in some conditions the plants could not be able to go for the cell pollination and in those cases they go for the another mode of pollination and that is called as a cross pollination and in this mode of cross pollination in this mode of pollination they always require a agent to facilitate the pollination process so before getting into the details of what are the agents and how the pollination is going to happen let's discuss what are the conditions we have uh, we uh, are uh, there in the plant system which does not f facilitate the cell pollinations. So, in this uh, we, we have already discussed about the hercogamy. So, uh, as we discussed in the previous lecture what is mean by hercogamy is that it is a kind of a mechanical barrier which is present either on the top of the stigma or on the top of the anther and that does not allow the spontaneous uh, mixing of these two components it means it does not allow the uh, pollen grains to reach to the stigma or vice versa and in these kind of uh, cases the plants have no choice but to go for the cross pollination because they need a factor which could remove these kind of mechanical barrier to facilitate the pollination. Now the second factor so what we are discussing we are discussing about the factors favoring cross pollination ok. We have already discussed about the hercogamy which means mechanical barrier. Now, we will discuss about the second point and that is called as the dichogamy. So, what is mean by dichogamy is that the dichogamy means the maturation in the dichogamy what is mean by dichogamy is if you, if you remember in the previous lecture we have discussed that the cell pollination is only possible when the anther and the stigma are maturing at the same time. So, then only it will go for the self pollination, but what is mean by dichogamy means that the anthers and stigmas are not maturing at the same time or they are maturing at the different times. So, in these cases the anther and stigma is maturing at different times. This means either the anther is getting matured first or 
the stigma is getting matured first and in so either the uh, the male sex organ is getting matured first or the female sex organ is getting matured for uh, matured uh, first and in those of the cases it be, it becomes uh, incompatibility because if suppose the male sex organ is getting developed it may not find any of the female sex organs to uh, to facilitate the fertilization in the other case uh, because it, it requires the you know the development of both the male sex organ as well as the female sex organ to be developed at the same time because the palingrain cannot you know sit for a very long period of time so the cases where the female sex organ or the gynoecium is getting matured first the condition is known as the protogamy whereas the 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 time when the androecium is getting matured first the condition is known as the proto uh, entry so in both of these cases the these kind of plants have no choice because they cannot go within the same plant because either the pollen grain either the male sex organ or the female sex organ is going to be matured uh, at a different time so they will not go for the self pollination they have the only choice to go for the cross pollination because then they can suppose the uh, male sex organ got matured then the pollen of this particular plant can go to the uh, and uh, to the gynoecium of the second plant and that actually is a kind of a cross pollination now the third condition the third condition is called as the is called male sterility so the third condition is known as the male sterility uh, in these cases the pollen grains are not functional then we have the another conditions the plant is having the unisexual in nature so in the case of that this means the male and female plants are different so in these cases the uh, male flower is present on the male plant and the female flower is present on the female plant and in these kind of cases the cell pollination is not possible so they, these kind of plants has to go for the cross pollination the example is the papaya uh, the other factor is uh, heterostyly uh, heterostyly is a very very unique conditions so in the heterostyly uh, what you have is so in the heterostyly what you have is the uh, so you if you remember that the uh, the uh, in the in the pollen grains in the in the typical plant what you have is that the stigma is always on the lower side then to the pollen grains or the anther so position of the anther is always been on the top of the uh, uh, the stigma okay but in this kind of so these are the you know anthers which are present on the top so that's how the pollen grains can form fall from here and they will go to the stigma of the flower but in these kind of heterostyly conditions the stigma of a flower stigma is very long so because of that it does not allow self pollination 
So these are the crucial, some of the crucial factors which actually force the plant to go for the cross pollination. So what is meant by the cross pollination is that you are actually involving the two different plants. So the anther or of the one plant or pollen grains from the one plant will go to the stigma of the another plant and that is how it will, it will facilitate the fertilization. As you can see on the PowerPoint slide, I have depict, I have explained how the cross pollination is happening. So in the event of cross pollination, uh, the, the pollen grains from the one uh, plant is being released and then they will carry over to the stigma of the another plant. And since this carriage involves the factors, there are multiple factors which are important for facilitating the cross pollination. What are these factors? There are abiotic factors and there are biotic factors. The abiotic factor means the uh, anemophily or the wind pollination where the wind is involved. So, wind will carry the uh, pollen grains from one flower to another flower. Whereas in the case of hydrophily, the water will carry the pollen grains from the one plant to another plant. Within the abiotic factors, we have the different types of uh, 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 different types of organism which also facilitate the pollination process. What are these abiotic factors? It could be entomophily, where the insect is facilitating means insect is carrying the pollen grains from the one flower to another flower. In the other case, it can be orenthophily where the bird is carrying the, uh, the stick, uh, pollen grains from the one flower to another flower. And in the rare cases, it is also called as the characterophily. And characterophily is actually where the uh, bat is involved in the pollination process. So all these we are going to discuss now. So uh, cross pollination. So it is water pollination, air, water, number 3. So these are the part of abiotic and then you have the insect you have the birds and then you have the bat which is involved and these are the biotic factor. So let us start with the air, pollu air uh, uh, pollination. So Air pollination is happening in uh, with uh, as I said air pollination means the travel of the pollen grains from the one plant to another plant with by the medium of air. So in these cases the air is actually carrying the uh, pollen grains from one plant to another plant. As you can see on the powerpoint slide uh, I have shown a schematic diagram to explain how the wind pollination is happening. So this is an example of the maize plant where the pollen grains from the top are being dispersed and these pollen grains are being dispersed from the male flower whereas you can see that the female flower is present at the bottom and then they reach to the stigma. So in these cases uh, as the name suggests and as the medium is very very non-specific because the air is can disperse these pollen grains in any direction not like it is a kind of a directional uh, uh, movement of pollen grains towards the stigma. The, these kind of plants are actually producing the pollen grains in a very very huge quantities. For example, a single flower of cannabis which is actually the bhang plant is producing more than the 500 thousands of pollen grains. Uh, in, in a uh, uh, more than the 500,000 pollen grains. Uh, these and as the air has to carry these pollen grains from 
uh, the uh, from the uh, from the anthers to the stigma these pollen grains are very small they are light they are dusty and sometimes they also contains the wings so that they can be able to uh, uh, they can be able to fly within the air to reach the uh, very very long distances uh, uh, the reports are there that the uh, pollinations or the wind pollination is happening to a distance of 1300 kilometer even then the uh, uh, because the air air is the only medium to do the uh, pollination these uh, flowers of these plants are also being well exposed to the air so that it also allows the removal of the pollen grains from the uh, from the anther of the main flower as well as it also facilitate the uh, receiving of these pollen grains by the stigma. Uh, on the other hand, the stigma also is uh, very much like a protruding means stigma is well exposed and it is hairy so that it actually captures more and more pollen grains which are present in the air. And the uh, the, the examples of these classes are like several types of grasses, sugar cranes, bamboo, coconut, palm, cannabis and the maize. The maize figure what you have seen here. The, uh, in some of the uh, plants such as the uh, Artica plant, the pollen grains which are present in the anther are bursting all of a sudden. So, that actually causes a kind of a pressure to release the large quantities of pollen into the air and this mode of the uh, pollen dispersal is called as the gunpowder mechanism means it, this is, it is like similarly it is mimicking just like as the we are firing the uh, gun from the pistol. Uh, since these plants does not rely on the other kind of uh, biotic factor means they do not rely on the insect, bat or bird, the corolla or the calyx of these plants are not very attractive because they do not have to attract the uh, pollinator uh, which are biotic in nature. So, the calyx and corolla are very much reduced or they are almost absent. The uh, anthers on the other hand are very very versatile. So, they are very light so that as soon as the wind comes it actually uh, uh, swings the you know complete plant and as a result the pollen grains are being released from these, uh, uh, these uh, plant. The uh, as I said the common examples are grass, sugar cane, bamboo, coconut and cannabis and maize. Now, we will go back to the uh, another mode of pollination and the other mode of pollination is called as the water pollination. So, I have shown a schematic example. This is schematic example I have taken uh, from the uh, is, is depicting the pollination water pollination in the case of Velsinaria. So, these kind of flowers in this kind of uh, mode of pollination also the uh, uh, transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is happening with the medium of air uh, water. So, uh, uh, as we discussed for the air, uh, air pollination, the calyx as well as the corolla are very very small and they do not have any role in, in, in the pollination part because as I said you know these are dependent on completely on the abiotic factor and abiotic factor does not require calyx or corolla. Uh, pollen grains as well as the stigma which are being produced in these plants are uh, water resistant. So, they do not get the uh, they do not get wet by the water. Uh, and in this case also the stigma is very long and it is sticky. So, that as soon as it take up the pollen grain the pollen grain get stick to the stigma and that is how it will facilitate the fertilization. The example in this category is the Velsinaria, Jostera and the Ceratophyllum. So, uh, these three classes are actually following a very very unique and different mechanism. For example, in the case of uh, Velsinaria, uh, 
uh, what is happening is that the flowers which are present in the the male flower. So, Valsinaria has the male and female the two different plants. So, the male flower is actually male flower is uh, detaching from the male inflorescence and then it is coming onto the cells uh, onto the water surface and then it is floating on the top of surface and in this and whereas the female plant is sending its female flower on the top of the surface by the a very very long uh, uh, branch and the uh, by the flow of water the uh, the uh, male flower is coming very close to the female flower and that's how the pollen grains are being released and then as it uh, reaches to the stigma of the female flower and as soon as the fertilization happens the female flowers are again then retracted back into inside the uh, inside the uh, water by coiling the uh, the uh, uh, the branch which is connecting the uh, female flower whereas in the case of jostera uh, the, the the mechanism is very very different in the case of jostera the pollen grains are long elongated and needle like and they don't contain the uh, outer covering called as exine and they float on the surface of the water because uh, because uh, in the absence of exine they normally have the similar density as the water and uh, as soon as they touches the stigma they get coiled around it and then as a result then it uh, later on it uh, germinates on the stigma and then that is how it releases the uh, male gametes to facilitate the fertilization. Uh, in the case of ceratophyllum, uh, the male or the female both flowers are totally submerged and they contains the, uh, the, uh, the stigma uh, as well as the anther. The male anther which is uh, get excised at the base uh, rise upward reach to the surface of water and then it releases and that releases the pollen grain. Uh, while sinking in water, they come in contact with long and sticky stigma of female flower to affect the pollinations. So, as you can see in all the three in these three classes, the mechanism is very different, but it involves the water and the uh, although the minute procedures may be very different, but overall uh, uh, system is that the, uh, the pollen grains are or the male flower is being released, it floats onto the water and then it reaches to the female flower and there it do the dehiscence and releases the pollen grains and that pollen grains goes and bind to the sticky stigma and that is how it goes into the fertilization. So, these are the abiotic um, uh, factors which are facilitating the pollinations. Now, we will discuss about the biotic uh, uh, pollination. So, once we talk about the biotic pollination, the first class comes to the insect pollination or insect, uh, uh, insect pollination where the insects are involved. And since we are talking about the biotic pollination, there are specific criteria which these uh, insects have to follow. So, what are these criteria? Okay. So, as we discussing about the insect pollinations and insects actually get attracted toward the color, scent and other kind of molecules. So, in those cases the flowers has to be colored, flowers are colored, okay. they should produce scent. The scents actually is kind of a chemo attractant for the insects to uh, attract towards the flower and as a result the insects goes from one flower to another flower and that is how they actually do the insect pollination. Uh, the flowers produces 
specific scent or specific odor and because of that the uh, flower as well as the insect combination is very very uh, unique in most of these cases of insect pollination it is not like any random insect is going to the uh, facilitating the pollination. So, there are uh, insects which are uh, doing the pollination of a class of uh, plants. Uh, the third is these flowers are also producing nectar uh, number four uh, the the as I said you know the flowers are colored so the it actually produces the color of different flower so that actually attracts the insect of different types. Number four, uh, the male or the female flower actually and uh, in this case the uh, flower actually blossom at a specific time means the flower actually blossom with the activity of a particular insect. So, the flower blossom at a specific time. Uh, for example, there are plants which are blossoming only at the sunset. Okay, because they are looking for a particular type of moth which actually is going to facilitate the pollination. In some cases the pollen grains of these flower uh, of these plants uh, of these flowers are edible. Uh, the example are rosa. So, why it is important that the pollen grains should be edible because the insects are attracting towards these flowers for three reasons. One because they are looking for a specific flower or a specific color. So, that color actually attracts the insects towards them. Number two they might be get attracted because the plants are uh, the flowers are producing a specific scent. So, that scent is working as a chemo attractant. Number three the plants are these flowers are also producing the nectar. So, nectar is also uh, is, is, a, is a actually a, a solution of sugar. So, that also they want to have it for their uh, nutrition. Number four the if the pollen grains is also a source of food then the insects will also love to go to these flowers and in this process they will eat some uh, pollen grains, but they will also facilitate the, uh, the pollination. On the other hand because the pollen grains has to uh, travel from one place to another place these pollen grains are very very rough. rough and sticky. Why it is important? It is important because these pollen grains normally go and stick to the body of the insect and that is how they will travel from one place to another place and that is how they will facilitate the uh, pollination. Uh, Let us take an example. So, the, in the classical example in this case is the salvia. Uh, so, as you can see on the powerpoint slide I have shown a schematic diagram how the, in the case of salvia the insects are actually facilitating the uh, pollination. So, you can before getting into the details of the uh, insect pollination by the salvia let us understand first the, uh, the particular kind of adaptations happens within this flower. So, the salvia 
is actually having a having a unique flower where the corolla is bilobed so the because of this bilobed corolla the lower lobe which is working like a platform on which you can see the insect will sit okay whereas the top lobe is actually working like a uh, like like a uh, roof so that actually protects and gives a kind of a covering to the flower on the other hand the flowers are protoandrous means each flower has two epipetalous stamen located anterior posterior in position each stamen has a short filament uh, and a elongated curved connective tissue so you can see that it has the elongated curved connective tissue and that actually splits the particular uh, uh, anther into two parts and uh, one part is called as the sterile anther the other one is called as the fertile anther so you can see that the connective tissue uh, uh, connective uh, tissue has uh, bifurcated the anther into two part one is called sterile anther the other one is called as the fertile anther so the fertile anther is actually with the roof uh, corolla is toward the roof corolla and the sterile uh, anther is towards the uh, bottom uh, towards the floor uh. so you can imagine that insects when when insects comes it sits on the lower uh, uh, bottom of the flower as soon as it sits it actually causes the pressure and because of that the uh, the connective tissue is getting stretched and it, that actually bring down the uh, the fertile anther lobe and that releases the anther uh, that releases the pollen grain on the back side of the uh, the insect now imagine that the same uh, um, uh, uh, insect goes into the another flower so when it goes into another flower the 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 back of the insect which actually is containing the pollen grains are getting rubbed against the uh, stigma and as a result the stigma actually receives those pollen grains and that actually facilitates the fertilizations so apart from the sylvia uh, uh, apart from the salvia we have another example we have several example where the insects are also insects are facilitating the pollination these are called yucca orchids and ficus in any of these examples the uh, particular mechanism is very very unique for example in the case of yucca the the insects which is uh, participating in uh, pollination is called as the tegeticula and that the, the this particular uh, moth is actually having a symbiont relationship with the yucca and that actually facilitate into the pollination process so in this kind of symbiotic relationship the yucca is providing a space for the insect to live and on the other hand the insect is facilitating the uh, pollination process similar is the condition for in the case of orchids or in the case of ficus where the the flower is providing a, 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 a breeding environment for these insects and in return the insect is facilitating the pollination now we'll move on to the next uh, class of uh, next uh, type of uh, pollination and that is called as the bird pollination so as we have a specific requirement for the insect pollination we will definitely going to have the insect uh, a specific requirement for the bird pollination so what are these uh, specific requirements for the bird pollination number 1 see birds are very very large in size okay so and they since they have to come and facilitate the pollination the first requirement is that the flowers are large in size number 2 since birds are 
uh, have to sit within this uh, flower and then they can actually be able to facilitate the pollination process. The flower should have a funnel shaped corolla. Number three, uh, similar to the insects, since the plant, uh, the birds are also getting attracted towards the color. So this flower also should be bright in color. So this flower should be brightly colored. This flower should have the nectar, and these flowers should not have the scent. So, they usually, so birds usually do not like the scent. So, they also like, they, they want that the flower should be without any scent. So, the flower should be scentless, but they look, like to have the nectar because the nectar is a uh, solution of sugar and that birds can actually feed on. So, the, uh, you, you can see as you can see on the PowerPoint slide, I, I have depicted the a typical example of the bird pollination. You can see this is, so the bird is, the bird uh, which are involved in doing the bird pollinations are mostly been the hummingbird or the crow, bulbul or the parrots. The plants, example of the plants which are actually going through the bird pollinations are bombax begonia and agave. So, in these cases what happen is the, uh, the as you can see this is a kind of a tube like structure. So, and at the bottom of the tube what you will see is actually a uh, nectar. So, what happen is the bird actually wants that particular nectar and in this process it actually carries the pollen grains from one plant to another plant. Now, we will come back to the our last uh, 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 factor and that is called as the bat. So, in the case of bat, the uh, in the case of bat, the uh, again we will discuss about the criteria what is important for a bat to facilitate the pollination. So, in the case of bat, the most of the criteria are same as what we have discussed was the bird that means the flowers are large number 2 it should be tunnel shape number 3 now contrary to uh, uh, the birds the birds uh, bats are normally being attracted toward the flowers which are dull in color means the colors should be dull not the bright color because as you know the bats are actually the nocturnal animals or nocturnal birds nocturnal animals so they uh, always remain out in the night so they actually are looking for the colors which are dull in color. Then similar to the birds, they also looking for the nectars and they also looking for the, uh, but uh, contrary to birds, they are looking for the strong scent because you remember that since they are traveling in the night they always go to the particular flower either by seeing the flower uh, or by, um, uh, by getting the sense of uh, scent. The example in this case are Kijelia pinata and there are so many examples which are also given on the PowerPoint slide. So, uh, now what we have discussed so far, we have discussed only the, we have discussed about the cell pollination, we have also discussed about the cross pollinations. Now, we will discuss, so uh, as we discussed for the uh, cell, uh, cell pollination, the advantages as well as the disadvantages, 
Now, we will also discuss about the advantages as well as the disadvantages of the cross pollination. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of cross pollination? One of the uh, drawback of the self pollination is that it does not allow the formation of the, uh, the new species. So, that is actually is always been overcome if you go by the cross pollination. So, if you go by the cross pollination, you are actually going to, so the plant is going to be mixed. So, the two plants which are going into neighbors they will actually go for the mixing and that is how they will going to produce the new species. So, it actually allows the genetic recombination and generation of new species. Number 2. <coughs> Uh, as I said, since the cross pollination is always mixing the genetic content of two different plants, it also going to bring the variations in offsprings. Now, this is very subjective actually, because if the uh, uh, variations are good, they are good for the plant, but if the variations are bad, then that becomes a disadvantage for in the case of cross pollination. Now, because the variations are bringing up in the plant that actually makes the healthy and strong offsprings. Number 4 it normally in uh, so there are many uh, plants which actually goes for a very very high yield if they go for the cross pollination so there are a plants which actually have the option either to go for the cell pollination or to go for the cross pollination and what people have observed that when they go for the cross pollination they are actually having the higher yield One such plant is known as the mustard plant. So, mustard plant is going for a very, very high yield if the mustard is going to for a cross pollination. So, let us discuss about the disadvantages of the cross pollination. So, as you as you remember, we have discussed that the cross the major advantage of the cross pollination is that it actually allows the plant to evolve and get into uh, new new and uh, advanced traits because the pollen grains which are coming they are coming from the different plant. But this is a kind of advantages advantage only if the if the uh, if the qualities which are coming from the neighboring plant are good so but imagine a situation where the uh, the plant species which is growing nearby has the bad traits okay or having a bad qualities then these bad qualities are also coming into the picture so the uh, ability of developing the new species probably can go into either in the uh, good direction or into the bad direction and that is the one of the disadvantage of the uh, uh, cross pollination.
because of this only uh, if you uh, in, in India now the uh, the farmers are very very careful about the sowing uh, their uh, their field with the a particular kind of crop. So, what uh, farmers are doing is they are trying to have the similar kind of crops in the neighboring field. For example, if you suppose one farmer has a crop in this field and another farmer has a crop in this field and this is suppose a wild type species and this is a uh, some uh, advanced species or some uh, you know transgenic species. Okay, so this transgenic species is considered to be slightly more uh, superior compared to the wild type uh, strain uh, in terms of either the yield or in terms of getting the better protection against the pathogen and all that. But you can imagine if this farmer is could not be able to if this farmer could not be able to protect their field by any mean then the pollens will come from here and they will do the cross pollination and that is going to dilute the uh, the number of transgenic plants which are present in this particular field or ultimately it is actually going to affect the neighboring uh, neighboring field as well that's why when any such situation arises either these two farmers are consulting with each other and they are actually asking to uh, have the similar kind of uh, crops or the farmer uh, this uh, the farmer which is going with the transgenic uh, crops are actually some or other way are protecting their uh, field either by putting a curtain kind of situation or they are putting a layer of trees. So, uh, if they put a uh, suppose eucalyptus tree or some other kind of bushy trees that bushy trees probably may give uh, slight protection against the cross pollination from the wild type species. But in other case they also have the ability uh, they have also mechanism to uh, pr to cover the field or sometime what they do is they somehow bring the uh, you know additional uh, field in between so that the distances between these two fields goes up ok. And this is all the problems of the cross pollination. Number two the one of the major uh, requirement of a cross pollination is that the flower should have the additional features flower should have the additional features in terms of having the different types of colors means the flower has to be very very beautiful so that they should be you know attract the insects and other uh, biotic uh, factors and on the other hand they should produce scent they should produce the nectars and they should have the all other kind of requirement what we have uh, uh, we have discussed uh, in, uh, in uh, while we were talking about the uh, the uh, cross pollination. So, those kind of features are required ok. This means the process is not economical. Okay. Which means what is that mean is the, the features what I am talking about is like the colored petals, presence of nectar, presence of scent etcetera etcetera. These features actually are putting a additional burden for the plant to uh, you know an additional burden on its metabolic activities. For example, a plant has to produce different types of colors and that actually will take up some amount of energy from the plant and that actually will result into the lower production or the lower lead. So, those things that is why it is called as that this process are not uh, these processes are not economical. Number 3 since uh, uh, a factor is involved, a, a, a carrier is involved uh, in the cross pollination which actually will carry the pollen grain from the one plant to another plant, the process is very very uncertain. So, 
the process is not full proof it is uncertain is uncertain you can imagine that suppose an insect which has taken a pollen grain from the salvia flower but what is the probability that this flower this particular insect will again go back to the salvia flower only it may go back to uh, some other flower uh, as per its liking so although this never ha this hap this probability is very low but it could happen that a particular insect is pollinating the five different flowers and he may not follow the sequence he may just follow from one flower to another flower and that may not be belonging to the same species and because of that it will not going to add up into the cross pollination same is true for the birds and same is true for the other biotic strain number 4 uh, uh, which is more related to this only the addition of undesirable features so this is all about the pollination in plant so what we have discussed we have discussed about the cell pollination we have discussed what are the strong points of cell pollination we have also discussed about the cross pollination and we also uh, have gone through or discussed many types of agents which are involved in doing the cross pollination ultimately we have also discussed the advantage as well as the disadvantages of uh, both mode of pollination either the cell pollination or the cross pollination so now what we are going to discuss we are just going to briefly go through the uh, the comparative sta uh, statement of both type of pollination to understand what are the advantages of a plant going through the cell pollination and what are the advantages of a plant going through the cross pollinations so as you can see on the powerpoint slide i have uh, uh, i have summarized the differences or the uh, contrasting features of the cell pollination as well as the cross pollination Okay, so what you can see on the PowerPoint, you can see that I have summarized the uh, differences or the contrasting feature of cell pollination as well as the cross pollination. So one of the feature is that in the case of cell pollination, the, uh, the plant either should have the bisexual plant or the at least the plant should be of a monotheous condition means the plant should have the uh, male as well as the female flower on the same plant whereas in the case of cross pollination there is no such uh, condition except that the plant should be dioecious means plant should be having either the unisexual character or plant should be having the male or the female flower on the different plants uh, in the case of cell pollination the external agent is not required means there is no carrier involved it actually becomes spontaneous uh, whereas in the case of cross pollination the external agent is required uh, cell pollination always gives the pure cell lines and the, it becomes it generates the offsprings which are mostly homozygous whereas in the case of cross pollination it creates lot of heterogeneity in the genetic genetic system genetic makeup so that actually brings the more variability in the system whereas in the case of cell pollination there is no variability so that actually does not allow to have the newer species and because the this particular plant cannot have the newer species it may not be able to withstand the environmental as well as other kind of uh, changes happening in the system so that may allow that may uh, make this plant be more susceptible for the extinction uh, whereas in the case of cross pollination since it is always been cross breeding with the newer and newer traits uh, it could uh, uh, allow the evolution of the new species and which the additional features uh, the examples in the cell pollinations are mostly the uh, cr uh, the crops which are uh, important for the uh, food production that is wheat, rice, barley, pea, groundnut, tomato, potato, etc. Whereas the examples in the case of cross pollinations are maize, bajra, cabbage, cauliflower, carrots, cucumber, apple, banana, etc. So, 
what you have uh, what we have discussed so far we have discussed about the differences or the contrasting feature between the self as well as the cross pollination so uh, let's summarize so far what we have discussed we have discussed about the male uh, uh, reproductive system and then we have also discussed that how these different types of uh, uh, different uh, how the male uh, male uh, sex organ is producing the pollen grains and how these pollen grains are going from one plant to another plant or how they are migrating within the plant but with this amount of knowledge we have many queries and many questions which we have to understand or which we have to address. So, I would like you to go through with these questions and think about them and then we will discuss these questions in our next lecture. So, what are these questions? These questions are as follows. As you can see on the PowerPoint, see what is uh, Chasmogamous flower? Uh, you can um, think about few examples and you can also should think about the uh, what are these flowers. Uh, you can also think about why the uh, cross pollination whether the cross pollination is possible in a chismo, uh, chismogamous flower or not. Uh, and uh, on the other hand uh, we can also discuss or you can also discuss among yourself uh, whether uh, what are the different strategies the plants have evolved to, uh, to prevent these self pollinations and uh, uh, you can also go through with the uh, websites and uh, web sources to understand how what is the bagging techniques and how it is useful in plant breeding programs and uh, lastly uh, we also uh, I would like you to go through with the uh, understanding about what is self incompatibility and why there is a question why the uh, the plant which can actually do the cell pollination as well as the cross pollination does not support the cell pollination and even if the any pollen grains uh, go through with the self pollination it does not lead to the formation of seeds in these self incompatible species so what is the reason why the self pollination does not lead to the seed formation in self incompatible species and then lastly I would like you to go through with the literature to understand what is mean by the emasculation in plants. So, uh, with this uh, uh, we would like to summarize or we would like to conclude our lecture here and in our next lecture we are going to address these questions and I am sure you might be uh, uh, you might be excited to know the answer of these questions. So, I would urge you to, uh, to either use the web sources or the other literature sources to uh, at least the attempt these questions. Thank you.